case for repeated quadratic factors. A couple of examples are in this case. One, the first one doesn't involve integration. We're just going to write uh, irrational function as the sum of partial uh, fraction. Okay, so that, this is the assignment. So what's given f of x equals this rational function where we have a cubic numerator x cubed plus x squared plus 1 and the denominator already factored factor is x times x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 cubed Okay, so write uh, well I put here in comma in general I don't want even detailed solution write in general uh, f of x is a sum of partial fraction the example will explain what is it that need to be done So let's see what is the solution. This is be pretty much a single step solution uh, because the denominator is already factored. Then we can write f of x. And let's see how many factors we have here one, two, three, and then three more because we have x squared plus one repeated three times. So we have a total of, uh, of three. We have x, which is the linear factor, a, a linear factor, and then x minus 1, another linear factor. And then we have, this is a prime quadratic, it cannot be factored. So we have the quadratic x squared plus x plus 1. And now we have three um, repeated quadratic. So the first one would be x squared plus 1. And then we have two more. The next one will be x squared plus 1 squared. And the last one will be x squared plus 1 cubed. So this is the same idea as we did with the, um, <coughs> with the repeated linear factors. Now what about the numerator? Well here, the, we can do one of two things. Um, you, can, you can use a, b, c, d, e, f. And if you find that, we can count how many coefficients we'll have in the numerator. Or we can say, you know what, all the linear will be a, a1, a2, a3, and so on. And all the quadratic, we need to have ax plus b. So it will be, we'll go in order. So the first factor will be 1, second factor will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? So we'll go like this. Here we'll have a1. Here, this is linear, so it will be a2. This is the first quadratic. This is the third uh, factor, so it will be a3x plus b3. And now we have three more quadratics. So we have a4x plus b4, a5x plus b5, a6x plus b6. And this is all short. This is what we need to do in this assignment. That's what I mean by writing general. Okay. Now you can also do some. Of, some people prefer to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. I mean, you can. You're not going to go wrong uh, if you choose to go with alphabetic order. Uh, so. Whatever you feel more comfortable. I feel more comfortable going in order, say, my first factor, second factor, and so on. So everything that correlates to, uh, to the first will be 1, to the second will be 2, and so on. All the linears are A, all the quadratic will have AX plus B. All right? So this was example 7. Example 8, we are actually going to perform an integration. So in example 8, we need to evaluate the following. Numerator. 
we'll have 1 minus x plus 2x squared minus x cubed. The denominator already factored as x times x squared plus 1 squared. Okay. <clears throat> So, the first thing we need to check, do we have a proper rational function? Well, let's see, the degree of numerator is 3, the degree of denominator is 1, and here we have 2 squared, so 4, so we have 5. So this is a proper rational fra fraction. We don't need to perform long division or synthetic division in this case. So we can go ahead and uh, decompose the rational function is a uh, sum of partial fractions. So we, we look at, uh, we are looking on the left, we have 1 minus x plus 2x squared minus x cubed over x times x squared plus 1 squared. So we, this is factor, so we have, let's see, one linear, and we have a quadratic repeated twice repeated quadratic, so x squared plus 1 and then x squared plus 1 squared. Okay, the linear will have a1, the first quadratic will have a2x plus b2, and the second quadratic, which is the third factor, will have a3x plus b3. And now the task is to figure out the five unknown coefficients, a1, a2, b2, a3, b3, okay? Of course, we multiply by the least, by the common, well, least common denominator, this one uh, is x times x squared plus one uh, times a squared, a raised to the power of two, and on, after multiplying by the least common denominator, we have on the left, we have the numerator 1 minus x plus 2x squared minus x cubed, and on the right, let's see what multiply what. a1 is multiplied, since the, deno the denominator is x times the quadratic squared, is multiplied by the quadratic squared. Okay, what do we multiply a2x plus b2? Well, we need to multiply it by x. And since we have x squared plus 1, we need to multiply it by x times x squared plus 1. Because of convenience, I'll go ahead and multiply x times x squared plus 1 and get x cubed plus x. Okay, so this will be the second term. And then add to it the third one, which is a 3x plus b3. Now this is x squared plus 1 squared already, so the only remaining thing is to multiply it by x. Okay, now at this point we need to compare coefficients. I'm not going to even bother to uh, clear the parentheses. We'll try to do it mentally, sort of mentally. Okay, so let's see, what are the coefficients, uh, or what are the uh, the power, the highest power of x that's going to come out of the right side? Of the left, we know it's cubic, but on the right side, you can see that you have x squared squared again. So the highest power will be x to the fourth. So now I'm going to make a list here. I'm going to say, okay, I have x to the fourth, I have x cubed, I have x squared, I have x and I have 1, okay? Those are the powers of x. And I'll compare coefficient. Coefficient on the left are, well, we don't have on the left, we don't have x to the fourth on the left, so that coefficient is 0. Um, the coefficient of x cubed is negative 1, the coefficient of x squared is 2, the coefficient of x is negative 1, and the coefficient of 1 is 1. Now, on the right, we'll have all sorts of combination of the a's and b's. Okay, okay so keep, let's look at uh, what we have to the fourth. 
In addition to A1, do you see any other case? Yes, A2x times x cubed will give you A to the x to the fourth. So I'm looking at A1 plus A2. Uh, from the third term, we cannot get x to the fourth or x cubed, okay? So x to the fourth and x cubed only come from the first two terms. Now, where do we get x cubed from? Well, if you clear the parentheses, if you, uh, if you square x squared plus 1, you have x to the fourth. You have 2x squared, and you have 1. You don't have x cubed. You're going to get x cubed if you multiply b2 times x cubed. And that's it. B a2 times x times x cubed is x to the fourth, and a2x times x is a, give you uh, x squared. So the only x cubed term is b2. And this is great because from here you get b2 equals negative 1. All right, now, how do we get x squared? Well, you clear the square of the, the, bi the binomial. As I said, you have x to the fourth plus 2x squared. So you have 2a1. Okay, where else? Uh, you multiply a2x by x, you have uh, a2x squared, so you have plus a2. And if you multiply a3x by x, you get a3x squared, so plus a3. Okay? So we're done with uh, coefficient of x squared. Now, coefficient of x. Uh, we can get, we are not going to get anything out of the first one because we have either x to the fourth or x squared or 1. Can we get anything out of the second one? Yes, b2 times x is the only one. So we have b2. What about the third one? Well, b3 will give us also. So b2 plus b3. Okay. And the last one, 1. We have a1 times 1. And I believe that's it, because here we have everything multiplied by x and everything multiplied by x. So with that, we finish. So this is it. This is my 5x5 uh, five five system. And as you can see, we get our instantaneous solution, because if a1 equals 1, then a2, a1 plus a2 equals 0, so a2 equals negative 1. Okay, now we get a1, we have, when we have a2, we can look at this equation. 2 minus 1 plus a3, so 1 plus a3 equals 2. So a3 must equal 1 as well. So we cover this. So we have the solution for a1, a2, a3. Now we have b2 equals negative 1, and therefore what about b3? Well, b3 b2 and b3 equals negative 1, but b2 is already equals negative 1, so b3 is 0. Wow, we got a complete solution. Okay, so we can include. So what is the solution? a1 equals 1. We need a2 and b2. Remember, we go by, by the order that uh, we apply those coefficients. So a2 is negative 1, and b2 is negative 1. a3 is 1, and b3 is 0. So, now we can go back to our integral and say the following. Our integral is the following. Let's see. Going back to the integral, this is what we have. This is the integrand. Right? So a1 over x. So we have a1 is 1. So 1 over x. And then a2 and b2 are both negative. So we can pull out the negative sign. And we have a2 is negative 1. So we have uh, x plus 1 over x squared plus 1. And then the third terms, a3 is 1 and b3 is 0. So we have simply x over x squared plus 1 squared dx. And now we broke everything down. 
we have the integrand as a sum of a partial fraction, and now we can go and start integrating. But before we do so, since I can look ahead, I have this ability to read into the future. Uh, and I'll, I'll be better off breaking down uh, x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 is x plus x over x plus 1 and 1 over x plus 1. Okay, so we're going to write it as the integral 1 over x minus x over x squared plus 1 minus, because the negative, 1 over x squared plus 1, okay, and here we have plus x over x squared plus 1 squared dx, like so. Now, turn out that we have four uh, terms here, and each one can be relatively easy, can it be integrated at the relative ease. Let's see. The antiderivative of 1 over x, of course, is natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay? Now, here we have x squared plus 1 in the denominator. Well, if you let u equal x, plus, x squared plus 1, du equal 2x dx. So we really have x dx on top. So x dx is 1 half du. So we have 1 half times uh, 1 over u, so it would be the natural log of x squared plus 1. We don't need absolute value because x squared plus 1 cannot be negative, nor can it be 0. So regular parentheses. So next we have negative something. What is the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1? Let's see how, how well you remember your 20 most important integrals that you're supposed to memorize. Antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1. The inverse tangent. Very good. So we have now just the inverse tangent of x. Okay. Now, what about this one? Um, if we let u equal x squared plus 1, right, then dx equals 2, uh, yeah, du equals 2x dx, so x dx is 1 half du, so once again you have the 1 half, okay, but now you have the integral of uh, u1 over u squared, which is u to the negative 2. Well, the antiderivative will be negative 1 over u. So you end up having negative 1 half, and here you'll have um, u or x squared plus 1. And then we add to it c to it. And that's it, folks. This is the solution, the solution.